Hello, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, marketonlist.cfds.com. Please uh, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. They are the specialist in uh, spread betting and CFD brokerage. And uh, alternatively, you can visit the educational site, which is www.cfds.education. Okay, let's try and decipher exactly what's happening with these uh, markets today. Interesting uh, price action today, folks. Uh, okay, so uh, let's just bring up our summary of... Uh, uh, indices globally you had the uh, the CAC finishing negative you have the DAX finishing negative you have uh, the likes of the euro stocks certainly negative almost by one by one percent the FTSE down by 0.6 percent uh, just under the 6400 level so uh, European markets certainly experiencing weakness now let's try and uh, explain as to why that was the case uh, we had the Asian markets overnight you had the Nikkei up almost barely up uh, 0.77 percent yeah, you had the Shanghai. Uh, where is the Shanghai? Uh, we have the ha we had the Hong Kong. Obviously, uh, certainly lower overnight. Uh, you had the likes of the Shanghai up by 0.3 percent uh, overall. Okay, so uh, certainly a mixed picture in Asia uh, overall. Obviously, uh, you are aware that it was a flat session. I'd say, uh, with the exception of the Shanghai. Now. Uh, going into the European close, the uh, the bias certainly shifted very quickly. Now, given the fact that the U.S. market certainly propelled higher, okay, uh, given uh, post the uh, actual um, obviously uh, Fed meeting minutes stating that December was a live meeting. Now, with regards to the uh, the actual FFR uh, futures currently pricing in exactly 50% chance now of a Fed hike. Now, before I think previously it dropped to low as 30% or lower. I think 24%. I've seen one poll. So given the fact that the dovish expectations are now being dashed and eradicated and uh, the shift, uh, you can, as you can clearly see, is now moving towards uh, towards a right hike. OK, so that's basically what we're observing at, at present. OK, so. OK, so uh, you had the uh, Shanghai, obviously, uh, uh, the only uh, outstanding uh, uh, level of strength. OK, so basically we went into the European session. Just to recap, we went to the European session. I got disturbed there with my little daughter walking in. OK, so with regards to the European session, we had uh, Shell earnings certainly uh, weaker than expected. Deutsche Bank cutting its uh, dividend and obviously weaker than expected. We had Alcatel weaker than expected. We had Sanofi weaker than expected. We had Schneider, BT earnings missing, Barclays missing. So overwhelmingly there was a, a risk off scenario. OK, now we also had the German CPI higher than expected. So that obviously kills the QE argument going into December. We've, had, we've already had anti-QE rhetoric already from uh, several ECB officials. Uh, pending home sales in the U US uh, in the afternoon, certainly weaker than expected. US consumption data, uh, data certainly weaker than expected. You had UK CBI data certainly weaker than expected. So uh, and that was against, you had some economic data out of the Eurozone, which was slightly better than expected in terms of confidence, etc. And, and total earnings were better, Lufthansa earnings were better. Uh, although uh, Shanghai, Nikkei are barely flat, nothing substantial. You've had oil prices moving lower ever since and putting in a potential top. Copper is certainly moving lower. The dollar obviously is strengthening to a large extent. And given the fact that the expectations of the Fed were maintaining its dovishness, etc., etc., is no longer the case. Now, if you add all these variables together, there's an overwhelming, overwhelming amount of uh, uh, evidence towards a bearish bias. Okay, so my bias has been bearish. I already swing short on the FTSE from 6445 and I'm expecting uh, but sub 6300, potentially 6200 on the FTSE. Given the fact that the Fed has, has left the uh, the probability of a, a hike in December, and the markets certainly have got, gone ahead of themselves. Okay, that's my interpretation and understanding thus far. Looking at the Shanghai index as well, you you cannot see strength ever since the Chinese have uh, cut rates on uh, last Friday. The index has failed to propel higher. Okay, certainly has failed to propel higher. Also, with regards to Nikkei, we're failing to close above that 200 MA. There certainly is no. Uh, bias or argument that you can close that above. So from my perspective, especially with regards to the S&P 500 as well on the weekly chart, yes, there is an argument that we could certainly propel higher and there is certainly more uh, uh, more uh, of a move to go on the upside. But given the fact that we've had this stellar move higher, it certainly seems to be exhausted from my understanding. OK, the, t the daily chart itself, no real uh, horizontal resistance or zone that you can certainly pinpoint here and say, OK, yes, this is going to break. It's very hard uh, to actually envisage that happening. We have had a break above. We had a fake out. We dipped below. We've dipped higher again. And now this move higher really does not have any legs or any real fundamental strength behind it, from my understanding anyway. OK, 
uh, my understanding states that this move here is going to be very vulnerable and uh, may well fail okay so again the market is king the market will dictate which way it wants to go but from my understanding it certainly is uh, the argument is getting weaker and weaker for it to move higher now the 10 minute chart as you can see here there's no real economic data that, that tells me that the s p 500 is going to crack this gap fill resistance which we can see here at 2090 and move higher substantially i could just cannot see it at this very juncture okay uh, now the s p did pivot move off the pivot lower 2082 as a dip bias came in especially given the fact that we had a dip buyer here at 2066 which was gap fill okay so again we're going to watch that potential um, support zone so can we actually move higher it's very hard at this current juncture very very hard at this current juncture to move higher i cannot envisage the move itself okay so it's it's going to be very very hard okay very very hard at this uh, current juncture so i'm expecting a thrust lower on the s p 500 at this uh, at this point i am expecting a move here here and here pivot low 282 potentially gets tested and we'll see exactly how the market uh, reacts thereafter okay now Going into European indices, as you know, the overwhelming data itself was negative, etc., etc. So let's see how this is uh, playing out in the uh, in the actual uh, technical sphere. Now, daily chart of the uh, S and P, uh, or should I say the uh, Euro stocks 50, you can see it's struggling to move higher. I did expect a thrust down of 200 MA, and I was long the Euro stocks from the 3 400 level, and it failed to transpire, and therefore I've closed subsequently, and uh, I am looking for a potential move lower. So. That certainly is a scenario that I find myself in at present. Okay, so the 60-minute chart, or should we say 60-minute chart of the Euro stocks itself, we failed to move higher. You can see that we've clearly put in a lower high. Now, that's on the back of obviously higher uh, inflation expectations as well. Uh, the fact that the Fed is going to hike in December certainly uh, potentially has been factored into a large extent as well, given the fact that the dollar is into resistance now, and that doesn't bode well for the European markets. Now, given, even with the euro moving higher, the European markets are still moving higher, so there is some sort of disconnect at present. So again, one needs to remain open and privy to that. So if I look at the daily chart of the uh, dollar, you can see here we are obviously currently into resistance. So that means the euro must certainly be into support. Now remember, euro is not going to just rely on the dollar itself. It's going to rely on risk. And risk is on the upside in terms of uh, the euro moving higher because you have a risk-off scenario, which means that the QE trade gets reversed, euro higher, and obviously equities lower. If I just bring up a chart of the euro USD, I'll be able to show you. Here we go. Okay, so we certainly, are, certainly seem to be making some type of base. We did get flush here at the 1.1050 level that was on the 28th okay uh, yesterday given the fact that the fed was going to hike etc and we certainly seem to be consolidating thus far so again very very interesting scenario going forward okay now all about dollar strength at this juncture okay now let's move on to the german dax now german dax is holding that gap level of resistance it's failing to move or propel higher 60 minute chart you can clearly see you have a double top formation double top generally means a lower high is expected thereafter and uh, don't be surprised to certainly see one, given the fact that we have an unfilled gap below, especially given the fact that the economic data out of the Eurozone in terms of earnings certainly has been weak, and Deutsche Bank quitting its, uh, its actual dividend. Again, these are all factors for the bearish side. Excuse me, I'm very tired today. Okay, so now we are looking at a potential H&S formation as well, so given the fact that we've made a double top on the 60-minute chart, and we are looking at further weakness uh, below. Okay, so lower lows, lower highs certainly resumes and certainly remains a game uh, that's in play okay so you have this uh, left shoulder here you've got this head uh, you're pull, pull, moving lower you have this right shoulder and then obviously the market's flushing on the uh, downside that's that's what i am expecting uh, now you do have pivot support on the net on the dax at 10690 obviously 10660 you have support here on this gap level and then obviously ultimate gap fill now, it's going to be very important to see the gap close on the downside, and that will be based on the NASDAQ weakness as well. Okay, so H&S formation is certainly in play, and we are in this bearish channel. Okay, now let's cross-reference the uh, this movement now with the CAC and the French CAC itself. Daily chart, uh, you can see we are still consolidating within there. You have this inverted head and shoulders formation, so that certainly needs to be respected, but you do have an unfilled gap below that certainly needs to close as well. 
Now the 60 minute chart, yes, we have held this key support level at uh, uh, 48.50 on the nut on the CAC. So we certainly respect, we are respecting that uh, from uh, from a trading perspective. Now you have this diagonal trend line, so you are potentially still looking at a lower high, but you haven't made a lower low yet. So again, that's going to be interesting whether or not we can close that gap on the downside. The 10 minute chart, the um, 4840 level certainly has acted as a rock, which is obviously gap fill support as well to a large extent. Uh, yeah, this level here at 4840 and obviously the market has propelled thereafter. Now, the, you do have the unfilled gap at 4800 that certainly needs to close in the downside. So one needs to remain vigilant of that. OK, now the FTSE 100. Let's just move to the daily chart of the FTSE 100. Now, the daily chart, we did have an inside bar on, yes, on yesterday's candle, and you did see some strength or buying strength certainly coming in. But this uh, uh, rising contracting wedge pattern certainly remains vulnerable from my understanding. Now, the 60 minute chart, you clearly see, you can see our HS formation, which is very similar to the German DAX, given the fact that you've had weak earnings, Shell, BP, sorry, Shell, and obviously uh, BT and uh, Barclays as well. So certainly a barrage of weak earnings. Now you are seeing the chart of copper certainly making a new low as we speak. So again, that's another factor certainly needs to be considered. As you can see in the 10 minute chart certainly is a uh, lackluster and uh, certainly potentially moving lower. And the four hour chart sh certainly shows you that you have an a h &S formation in play. And given the fact that you had weak earnings today and given the fact that you also had weak GDP out of the US and weak consum consumption data as well, it certainly does not bode well. Now, home pending home sales were, were weak as well. Uh, so everything is indicating low. I, it's very hard for me to argue, make an argument on the upside at this current juncture. OK, so I think that's a, uh, a summation of the European markets in total with regards to the FTSE. Now, the uh, the actual uh, volatility index, just before I finish, the volatility index certainly input is putting in potential dojis and making a potential base. As you can see here on the 60 minute chart, you are making a base now and we are looking at potential inverted head and shoulders playing out here as well. So this is going to be very interesting as whether or not we can make a higher lower than obviously the uh, the actual volatility certainly pick up. The French CAC as well, you can certainly see here in the daily chart, certainly are starting to put in potential support. We are making a higher low here as well. We've not made a lower low and therefore we are looking for a potential thrust higher in terms of risk, especially with the inflation data coming out on the positive side. Okay, folks, I think that's a wrap with regards to European markets. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.